I'm GK Bose, the voice of Laura Matsuda in Street Fighter V, and you're watching the Kami Player Channel. Well, it was bound to happen sometime. Ever since I started down this path of making a Fighters From video series, people have been asking me to look into other countries, and perhaps few have been as vocal as my fellow Brazilian friends. I've been avoiding this idea so far though, mostly because it wouldn't be very creative. I mean, I'm sure everybody knows about Blanca, Eddie Gordo or the Matsuda family, but what if we focus on more unknown characters instead? So here's what I have in store for you guys today, 5-ish Brazilian fighting game characters that you might not be aware of. Some come from well-known shitty games, others from very obscure titles, and there's even a few whose games are legitimately good. Believe it or not, I'm even cutting some out for time, so there's plenty more for a sequel if we ever get to that. Make sure to ask in the comments and share this video with others if you want me to continue exploring this topic. Also, before we go any further, I gotta give a special mention to Harimao, the sumo wrestler from Battle K Road. If you're not familiar with him, I've covered both this unknown Brazilian and his game of origin in another video, E Honda and Sumo Fighters. So as it's becoming a tradition around these parts, I'll leave a link for that in the description in case you want to check him out after this. Honorable mention out of the way, let's get this ball rolling since we've got tons of characters to go through. Kicking things off is someone from a fighting game franchise that has given us not one, but two unknown Brazilian fighters. It's Tao from Battle Arena Toshinden. Making his first and only playable appearance in Battle Arena Toshinden 3, Tao is a 45 years old Brazilian tribesman who seeks to be at one with nature. As a seasoned fighter, he knows everything about battling, but rarely fights unless provoked or challenged. Tao was a close friend of Atahua's father, taking the boy in after the unexpected demise of his parents. Ever since then, Tao has become Atahua's adopted father and mentor teaching him how to fight and defend himself in combat so that he can learn his true strength and potential. He's also a big supporter of Atahua's dream of restoring the glory of his fallen empire lost centuries ago, even if deep down the older man knows that this will never happen. One day, Atahua came to him with news that a man named Abel promised the restoration of the tribe's empire as long as they agreed to participate in the third Toshin Daibukai as assassins of the Sushiki and help eliminate a couple of specific fighters. While understandably skeptic about the whole thing, Tao decided to go along with Atahua's plan and learn the truth about what was happening at the Toshin Daibukai. During the tournament, Tao found himself battling against his specific target, a man named Gaia, who was a former member of the Himitsu Kesha, a secret organization that basically runs the world from the shadows. After learning that his opponent wasn't fighting just for his survival, but to protect his own daughter, Alice, who was herself engaged in combat with Datahu at the time, Tao came to the conclusion that he could never win that fight and decided to forfeit the match. Atahua then quickly followed his footsteps and the duo returned to South America, carrying on with their peaceful lives and letting go of their dreams to restore the lost empire, instead choosing to preserve its legacy through the right actions. Tao is a very, well, tall individual, standing at 2.11 meters, or 6.9 feet, and carrying a large broadsword to combat. While for the most part he doesn't really dress like a native Brazilian would, I do find myself enjoying the way he looks with the bright colors and all the feathers. He may not be a perfect example of a Brazilian tribesman, but there's a few elements in there. As for gameplay, Tao is an unlockable counterpart to Gaia and as such shares a similar moveset. My impression was of a fighter with long reach but not too many abusable tools at his disposal, unlike some of his fellow cast members. He also seems a bit on the slow side, especially when it comes to the recovery of his attacks, but you know, it's just my general impression. I don't claim to be a Toshinden 3 expert. As far as tier lists go, it seems that Tao, like Gaia, is considered to be in the middle of the pack, around B tier, alongside most of the cast. So while he isn't the worst in the game, he is not one of the best either, which probably means he would be one of those characters we only rarely see being picked in tournaments. You know, in the alternate universe where Toshinden 3 competitions are major FGC events. But anyways, that's one lesser known Brazilian character done. While it is tempting to cover Atahua next, he's not really a Brazilian fighter, so let's check the next iteration of the franchise instead. It's time for Fan Barefoot, who made his first and only appearance in Toshinden 4. A brash young boy, only 13 years of age, Fan has a pet pig named Wolfie of all things who follows him wherever he goes. 
Wolfie is present during the fights, kinda like Samurai Showdown's Galford and Poppy, but unlike the dog, Wolfie does very little in terms of actually helping, with the notable exception of a few select special moves. While he appears to have a cheerful personality, Fan has a troubled past, having lost both of his parents when he was still very young. He then went on to live with his grandfather, helping him make a living as a fisherman. One day, Fan fought an injured warrior carrying a spear in the forest behind their house. That warrior turned out to be Mondo, a character present in the first three games in the series, who was nursed back to health by the boy and his grandfather. As a gesture of gratitude for saving his life, Mondo took it upon himself to teach Fan some of his fighting techniques, thus becoming the boy's master. A year after Mondo had left, a strange clothed man came to their house, asking for the whereabouts of the warrior they had helped. This figure was Gamma, another character that made his debut in Toshinden 4. Upon sensing his dark and malevolent intent, Fan's grandfather refused to help, causing Gamma to promptly murder him. Vowing revenge, Fan formed a team with a Swiss girl called Guela Marionette and her English friend Lancelot Lake Knight, who I previously covered in Fighting Game Fencers, link in the description, to compete in the fourth Toshin Daibukai in search for the mysterious man that killed his grandfather. Fan's design is of a skinny white kid with a classic anime-styled purple spike hair and wearing pretty much only a pair of baggy green shorts. He by no means looks anything like a Brazilian, but I do kinda dig his design. Not a fan of the pig's dumb special attacks, though. From what I've seen, Fan is quick on his feet and his spear grants him a lot of range. He's rather weak, though, and some of his strikes come with a little bit of recovery. Again, this is very little more than my first impression and by no means should be seen as an in-depth analysis, so take it for what it is. As for a tier list, well, I wasn't able to find anything during my research, so I'm afraid I can't offer you anything else to help you measure how effective he is in competitive play. As usual though, if anyone out there is more familiar with the game and wants to wait in, by all means, you're more than welcome to do so in the comment section. For now though, it's time to take a break from 3D fighters and go back to the good old 2D as we look into our first female fighter in this list. It's Pupa Salgueiro from the tag team classic Rage of the Dragons. If you're a long time viewer, you've probably seen characters from Rage of the Dragons being mentioned before. Even Pupa's own partner, Jose Rodriguez, better known by his friends as Pepe, was listed in my fighters from Mexico video. As for Pupa, she once lived in Brazil with her father and brother until both children were sent to America for schooling. Her older brother, who often got into fights, one day didn't return home, causing a worried Pupa to quickly partner up with Pepe in order to look for her missing sibling at the tournament. Sadly though, their mission wasn't successful, with Pupa's ending revealing no new clues about her brother's location. Despite it all, she remains optimistic about his fate and decides to keep looking for him. Personality-wise, Pupa is a tomboyish and cheerful girl who does her best to hide her worry for her brother with a smile. Pepe and her go to the same school in Sunshine City, but while he's the womanizing and popular tough guy, she's the smart and cute girl who speaks broken English and is really into fixing machines. The pair is often at odds with each other, with Pupa accusing him of being too arrogant and full of himself, while Pepe claims she's too immature and childish. Despite their differences though, they have become good friends during their investigations, even if they continue to argue from time to time. Pupa's fighting style is a stylized version of capoeira, though the addition of a range to hit her opponents would surely make Patches a Hulahan proud. In the tier list, Pupa is probably one of the bottom high tier characters, which still easily makes her one of the top 5 fighters. She's the fastest character in the game in both movement and attack speed, and also arguably one of the easiest to use due to her unblockable queixada. She also comes equipped with very good juggles, but she can't quite take as much abuse or deal as much damage as some of her fellow fighters, which holds her back a little bit. Overall though, Pupa is still a very solid option and has good synergy with her partner, Pepe, making them a force to be reckoned with. Right then, let's continue with another female fighter from Brazil, but this time from a significantly more obscure title. It's Lisa or Liza from Kaiser Knuckle. Known outside Japan as Global Champion, Kaiser Knuckle was released in 1994 by Taito as one of the many games trying to piggyback on Street Fighter II's success during the early 90s. Liza is an Amazon and jungle girl, cause you know, that's pretty much how we all are in Brazil, who fights alongside a monkey and a green cockatoo. Her fighting style bears great resemblance to Samurai Showdown's Nakoruru and Galfor, 
using special moves to command her animal companions to attack in her place. She heads to the tournament in the hopes of winning the prize money so that she can buy a new excited costume for the Rio Carnival, which is a backstory I actually kinda like since it introduces a major element in Brazilian culture. What's very weird about it though is that Liza has a super move where she can be seen wearing the very same outfit her ending shows her acquiring with the prize money, which makes her whole quest pointless. As for how good of a character she is, well, obviously Kaiser Knuckle was never regarded as a major competitive fighting game, so any info I can give you would be, at best, based on the opinions of a few players. That said, I did find two separate tier lists during my research, and both seem to agree that Lysa sits alone at the very bottom of the cast, which certainly doesn't help her chances. To make it worse, Kaiser Knuckle's last boss is supposedly no pushover, so Lysa players have their work cut out for them. Which reminds me of a YouTube series I would like to recommend to my viewers. My buddy Ripper Vegas, inspired by Maximilian, has decided to defeat the hardest fighting game bosses ever in a series called Fighting Game Freakout, of which I'm a big fan. And now my friends, I find myself facing a dilemma. So many fighters to go through, so little time. I'm afraid we're approaching the end of this video and I'm gonna have to leave a few names waiting for a possible sequel but I can't possibly let you live without introducing one of the most obscure Brazilian fighting game characters of all time. It's Goryeo from Fight Fever. Old time viewers will remember this Korean fighting game from my Fighters from Mexico video. For those that don't, Fight Fever is a 1994 title released on the Neo Geo MVS system. It features a total cast of 9 fighters, with some interesting designs mixed with others that are just shameless copies of better characters. Back in my other video we saw a Mexican fighter whose only real clue about his country of origin is his backstory, he even has a clearly Asian name. But today's character actually does look like a Brazilian. Goryeo is a fat indigenous warrior with the ability to throw fireballs and spin around quickly against his opponents. Sure, he's just a ripoff of Blanca, sharing many suspiciously similar sprites, but I still like the fact that he's a pretty accurate representation of our culture. Judging by his ending, he even seems to be fighting against deforestation, which is actually quite a good storyline for a character like him. As for how he plays, well, you guys know how these old games are, so I can't really offer much in terms of technical analysis. Judging from a one playthrough in arcade mode though, his fireball seems powerful and the stupid belly slide attack appears to have a decent hitbox, but Goryeo is a lot slower than some of his fellow cast members. Take that with a big old bucket of salt though, as I'm certainly giving this game's gameplay way more credit than it deserves. And that's about all I have for today, guys. How many of these obscure fighters did you already know? Who's your favorite Brazilian fighting game character ever? What country or region of the world should I consider next for my Fighters From series of videos? Leave your opinions in the comments below. Please remember to subscribe and allow notifications, and if possible, try to share this content with your friends. The more people we can add to our little community, the better it is for the channel. Before I end this video though, I would like to quickly talk to you about my fighting game based card game. It's a little side project I've been working on for quite some time now, and I recently decided to conduct some beta tests using Tabletop Simulator. I'll leave a comment below with more details and information on how to proceed if you're interested in taking part of these tests. For now, this is just a hobby, but if it turns out people enjoy the game, the dream is to officially release it someday, so any help is truly appreciated. So until next time, this has been a Player, and I'll see you guys later.